So welcome to Taipei Zoo. The, uh, the train station is called Taipei Zoo Station and it drops you right here at the entrance. It's a, a few meters walk just up the road here to the entrance of Taipei Zoo and that's where we're heading. Uh, the easiest way to get access and get in is using the easy card. We will uh, go and check on the prices for entry in just a few moments. Well, we just made our way in. A little bit different from the last time we came here. We had to uh, enter our passport details and, uh, and stuff into uh, a computer app system. Not sure why exactly. So we're just heading over to the service center over here. On the right, just after you get in the gate, on the right hand side is the service center and you can go over here and get uh, some maps and some information and things like that. The visitor center just here and we'll grab ourselves an English map. So the first exhibit just off to the left of the service center or the visitor center is the flamingos. You can see some of the pink flamingos here. Very cool. Long pink legs and pink beaks. All the pink flamingos here. This one here with his head underwater. They moved closer for us. Isn't that nice? You can see that little baby one there now. The lady we were talking to said it was born yesterday. The really good thing about this zoo is that there's lots of shaded areas around about. There's lots of trees that are overgrowing the paths and, and lots of shaded, shaded in areas. It's hard to get a photo of, but these are the Formosan pheasant. Lots of bars there to keep them in, or little wires. And it's hard to video through and hard to photograph through, but you can see it. Over there in the, uh, the cave is the Formosan black bear doing what bears do. Although it is summer and not winter, but he's having a nap anyway. A bit hard to see. The Formosan black bear. There's an otter in there. Having fun and having a good swim. Quick little fellas. Under the shade of the trees here. I wonder what this one is. Which animal's over here? Some deer again, maybe? The Formosan Soro. The Formosan Soro. We'll see if we can see any. Finally spotted one up there in behind the waterfall. The Formosan Soro. We're just heading into the Insectarium. We haven't been into the Insectarium before where all the insects are. So we're going to go and check them out. Look at that big dragonfly over there. Statue. Very cool. We'll go and check out the Insectarium. Cool big rhinoceros kind of beetle. This is the butterfly house section. Lots of different butterflies.
inside here. These butterflies have just hatched out of their chrysalis. You can see the chrysalis still inside there and the butterfly on it. So they would have hatched not long ago. There's another butterfly in there as well and another chrysalis. So very cool. Look at this, look at this butterfly here. It so looks like a leaf. So much like a leaf. And there's another big one just here. We love butterflies, they're so cool. Look at them, aren't they beautiful? Looks like a leaf on the on the back of the wings when they're up and when they're out, it looks like that bright and colourful. So cool. Some I want to take photos of, but my big lens on my camera just can't focus close enough. This orange one is just lovely. This big monster. A little bit hard to see. It's kind of like a big grasshopper, I think. Massive big grasshopper there. Look at the big spikes on his legs. Wow. And these ones here. He's as, he's as big as my hand, that. Look at him. Oh, he looks grumpy. Look at him chomp. <laughs> See his eyes and his little mouth going and eating those leaves. Oh, so cool. And the stick insect there. These having a bit of a nibble as well. These things are very cool. I'm glad they're not crawling on me, but they're very cool. These ones, these ones here look like a semi-dead leaf. That dead leaf there. That's his head just there, and his legs. And seriously, he looks just like a leaf. Dead bits on the end of him. Yes. Very, very cool camouflage. They only have the scientific name for these, and not what you'd actually call them, but uh, I don't know what, tree scorpions or something like that. Ah, crazy. Another one in there as well. Another few in there. And again, they're about as big as your hand in terms of, to give you an idea of, uh, of size. This one here, you can see all the stick insects in there. They're not sticks, they're stick insects insect down there on the back of the leaves. Oh, so cool. There's a rhinoceros beetle. There's lots of snails and slugs. I don't know, do slugs have a shell? I don't know. Let's call them snails. There's lots of snails that are attached to the trees around about in here as well. Lots and lots of them. Just here is the Mexican red kneed tarantula. With all its furry legs. Bam. Well, we've finished our time now at the Insectorium. We've just filled our bottle of water again at the bubbler over there and are heading back down towards the main entrance to get some lunch. There's a number of different uh, 
food places here. There is a McDonald's here, um, but there's a 7-Eleven and we can buy sandwiches or, or um, reasonably cheap hot meals there as well if we want. Uh, we'll go and check that out in a minute. Incidentally, um, I didn't mention before the entrance cost for the zoo. Uh, so to get into the zoo, uh, if you're using your Easy Card, it is $60 each, which is uh, about $3. Yeah, about $3 Australian. How cheap is that for a day at the zoo? Three bucks. That's amazing. Monkeys. We'll just stop here and grab a couple more photos and then we'll go and find some food. So we're queued up here at Macca's to grab some food. Jen decided Macca's would be good. Jen doesn't like talking on camera. But there's a gift store just next door here. And on the other side, which you can't see, uh, over through that gap over there is uh, the 7-Eleven and the uh, the visitor center and that. So we're just in the queue and uh, we'll get some food shortly. All the kids playing in the fountain here at the zoo, staying cool. I think adults are probably not supposed to, but man, I'd love to go jump in that. Anyway, up here past the flamingos again. We've had lunch. We are energized and refueled and uh, we're heading up around the corner and eventually up to the panda house. The gibbons up in the tree. Flying around. They're quick. This fella here is a different story. He's quite happy just hanging in the trees here. Looks like a person in a suit. <laughs> Crazy. Just up from the Gibbons is the Australiana section, a koala house over here. We're going to skip the koala house for the time being and head up the road to the pandas. They have these misters along the path that uh, squirt out misty water as you're wandering along, which helps keep you cool. And probably waters the plants as well. Coming up the steps here at the giant panda house. This is very exciting. We're going to go and see some pandas. We'll have a look on the outside first because there might be some in the field. Oh no, there's none in here. They'll be inside because there's people working in the exhibit. So obviously they keep the bears inside when that happens. All right, we're going to wander on into the exhibit and see what we can see. Hopefully we'll see some pandas. The interior enclosure is quite large. There's plenty of bamboo in there for him to eat and lots of things for him to play with. And they only have one bear in here at a time. There's a, a swing which he does swing on. I've seen him swing in that before. Uh, and the outside enclosure is, is very large. And, uh, yeah, so they're, they're well taken care of, these pandas. Although he's got his back to us, he was chowing or he is chowing down on some bamboo. It'd be nicer if he turned around and posed for us, but these are wild animals. They do what they want to do. They're very cool though. Very, very cool. Not as big as we expected.
doesn't want to face this way. Still in the panda exhibit. They have a, uh, a giant panda, and that would be life size, made out of Lego. Very cool. And of course, the obligatory panda gift store. Jen's gone in there to have a look. Check out these flowery type things. They look like little banana palms, but uh, they've got these yeah. fantastic flowers on them, red and yellow. Maybe they're a type of fruit, I don't know. And then you've got these beautiful little ones here. Lovely. There's some monkeys over here in the, uh, in the trees. Different type, I don't know what they are. There's no sign on this, uh, this exhibit just here. But they're very cool. Section over here, you can see the, the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> the white face capuchin. These fellas are having a wow of a time. This enclosure has the capybaras, the world's largest rodent. Um, they're pretty hard to see, but that's them down there. They're kind of like a dog-sized guinea pig or a pig-sized guinea pig. Unusual creatures. There, the world's largest rodent, capybara. Funny word. Capybara. There's a closer picture of the capybara. Cap capybara. Capybara. Mm. The world's largest rodent. Like a super-sized teenage mutant ninja guinea pig. <laughs> We've just come into the rainforest dome. Massive big dome to keep the birds and that inside. And uh, it's a walking path down around and through with lots of animals and birds and rainforest type things. Really cool plants and flowers. Jen's getting a fill on photos of flowers. Those are cool. Those ones are cool too. Tiny little monkeys in the trees, all running around. There's one sitting over here. Oh, run away. These ones are really quick. Don't hang around very often. Or for very long. There you go, you can see Sam Toucan there a little bit better now. A couple of toucans in this, uh, in this exhibit. Very cool. Their beaks are just fantastic. Bright orange and they have red feathers right under the black ones there where the, where the tail is. Bright red feathers under there. Very, very cool birds. There's a peahen just there. And just here, he's not, uh, not old enough to be afraid yet. I don't think, but this is a, a baby peacock or peahen, I'm not sure. But it's only a little one at this stage. Down here, you can see some turtles or tortoises. Tortoises. This one here is on a race with a hare. 
running. Look at him, moving flat out. Oh, there's food up there, buddy, go. Go. <laughs> there are a couple of three-toed sloths that live in those two containers. Actually, one is in there. You can just see a little bit of fur in the bottom of that one there. So he is in there. Oh, there you go. I was gonna say the sloths are out, not slothing, but it looks like they are slothing. You just can't see them. You might be able to just see the sloth in the bottom of his cage just there. The three-toed sloth. There you go, you can see the sloth a little bit better there now. We moved around a little bit and can see him. He's asleep, as you would expect, from a three-toed sloth, whilst the monkeys play in the trees around him. Look this way, monkey. Look this way. Nope, doesn't want to look this way. These guys are fast. There's a little monkey just here. Oh, look, another one here. There's another one. Hello, fellas. Hello. They're very cool. Very cool. Come on. Come on in. Nope. Little pond up the top here. Check out the giant lily pads. Makes you think that you could actually put your foot out and stand on it, doesn't it? I don't think you could, but they're very cool. And there's a frog over in there somewhere and he's very loud. A couple of bright parrots in there. Just lovely birds, those ones, aren't they? We saw some of them down, we saw one of them down at the Da'an Park last time we were there. They're fantastic. Nice and bright. Preening. Here comes Jen. Inside this door just here is air conditioning. Oh, we're very hot. We're going and cool off a little bit. Oh, just the air conditioning is so good. How's the air conditioning, honey? <laughs> so good. So good. It's very hot in outside. Alright, we'll have a look and see what's here. There's some Tiny little frogs in these things just here. I'll better turn it around so you can see what I'm talking about, eh? Tiny bright yellow frogs. Tiny bright yellow frogs. And I don't know if you can see down in over there. Let me put my body in the way so you cut the reflection out. There's a bright blue one in there as well. Spotty blue one. Just leaving the cool of the air conditioning back out into the heat and humidity. It's getting later in the afternoon and some of the animals are a bit more out and uh, a little bit more playful. It's still pretty hot, but there are chimpanzees over there. You can see the rangers. There's one over here on the, uh, on the log, lazing about. And there's one on the ground just there. And then there's a couple of other of the monkey species. I don't know what they are. Just here. One there and one up in the tree there, but you can't really see. This fella's a siamang. He's very cool. Very dark. Oh, dark and handsome. This fella's just a lot of fun. He's ignoring us now, but he's been playing with us a little bit. Holding his hand out and blowing kisses. I didn't get any on video, sadly. I was too busy taking photos, but uh, he is very cool. He's the baby chimp. Well, it's just ticked off five o'clock. It's just starting to rain as well. <laughs> That's weird, go figure. 
Um, there's a zoo sign up here made out of flowers and or plants. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. The rain will cool things down. Anyway, we're heading out now to the train. Uh, the zoo closes at five. It's a couple minutes past, so we're all heading out now. Kids are still playing in the fountain over there. So. <laughs> so we're heading out. We'll head back to the train station and uh, talk to you again shortly, I'm sure. Well, that was a good day. We uh, still only saw about half of the zoo. So we're going to have to come back and do a part two again at some stage. We've just jumped on the train and uh, we're getting back to Zongshan. Um, we have to change trains up the road here a little bit further, but that's all right. So we'll say goodbye for now and uh, talk to you guys again another day. Have fun. See ya. Bye.